Have you ever wondered why you're not able to get the Word of God to work in your life? Well, the wondering stops here and now. In this podcast, we will answer these questions through supernatural revelation of the Word of God as we meditate the Word together. My name is Craig Venn, and this is the Sunday Recap Podcast. Hello everybody and welcome to another amazing episode of the Sunday Recap Podcast. My name is Craig Venn. I'm glad to be with you again. And I know that uh, uh, it's been a couple of days since um, since we did one of these and uh, uh, have been a little, little bit busy. Um, Sunday is obviously church time, so there's no real time for a, a podcast. And um, actually what the Sunday is for is to, for all of us to hear and to learn and to uh to experience the word of God together. Uh, so, and then Monday is a Sabbath day. Monday is uh, Sabbath to be able to relax and enjoy a little bit of rest. So just one or two duties in the morning. And then, um, and then it's just a day of rest and relaxation, a little bit of recreation, do whatever I want to do. Um, and then back um, to the duties of ministry. Um uh, and the work of the ministry during the week, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is all is all ministry time and and work time, and uh, and business time and so on and so forth. Uh, so so just a couple of days off and and gives us a chance to to recoup and recharge the batteries, <clears throat> and then get ready for the week ahead. So so, but we are back today, Wednesday morning. Uh, what is the date today? The date today is twenty six. Wednesday, the twenty sixth of July. Um, glad to be with you guys here at the Sunday Recap Podcast. What is it that we do? We take everything that Apostle uh, Vernon preaches, Apostle Vernon RNC here at KBMI, what he preaches on a Sunday. And uh, and then what we do is we take that and we try to we try to get it into bits and pieces that are easier to understand. It's fairly fundamental the way that he preaches it. And the reason why we do that is because we believe in the power of meditation. So we take the word, we are we are dissecting it as far as possible, getting it into the sort of lowest common denominator across all of all of the message, finding out what those chunks and pieces are, <clears throat> and then meditating on that. Because meditation, without meditation, there's no revelation, right? Then without meditation, there's no revelation. Remember what Jesus said to Peter: "Blessed are you, Simon Peter." Blessed are you, Simon. I think he called him Simon by Jonah. Blessed are you, Simon by Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. So you've had a revelation. Uh, and because you've had a revelation, you are blessed. Okay. So that's the that's the process. That's the process to the blessing. That's the way to the blessing is revelation knowledge. So this is very important. Blessing is the big deal. Of the Bible, blessing is the big deal of the Bible, and the way to blessing is through revelation. Remember Psalms one. Apostle was preaching it on Sunday. He said, "Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord." So his delight is not in the association of his friends. His delight is in the law of the Lord. You can't have bad association and a delight in the law of the Lord and expect the blessing to be there. You can't. You got to figure out: Am I in association with with uh, negative people, or is my delight in the law of the Lord? Which one is it going to be? And if it's in the law of the Lord, what's going to happen? Revelation is going to come, and when revelation comes, then the blessing begins to rest upon me. What does the blessing do? The blessing maketh rich and adds no sorrow. That's what the blessing does. The blessing, God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it and have dominion. The blessing empowers you for assignment. It causes you to be able to do what God told you to do without blessing. You're going to be working in the flesh. It's going to be carnal and it's not going to be sustainable long term so we need the blessing how do i get the blessing meditating the word until there's revelation <laughs> and then once i've got the blessing revelation that caused the blessing then i can go out and actually do the word of god i can go and be fruitful multiply replenish the earth subdue it and have dominion i can go and and uh, and occupy until he comes so great to be with you guys as i always enjoy hanging out with you and, and spending this time with you uh, and uh, and uh, I've got some ideas moving forward for this channel. Um, it's it's I've I've also wanted to do stuff like um, 
like interview people and um i've wanted to do we actually were having a conversation the car it's it's in the embryo stage so don't hold me to this um but but we started started to play with the idea over the last few years actually of a a, a radio channel for kbmi can you imagine it kbm fm i mean how would that sound right kbm fm so who knows? Maybe we got something coming up, but that, that'd be pretty cool. But I, I want to start off somewhere along the line with interviews with people, um, <laughs> people that I have approached. Hey, I want to interview on the channel. I want you to, I want you to uh, be a part of of all of that. And and, and it's just <laughs> I get this blank look, like absolutely not. I am not doing that. Um, but who knows? Maybe we'll find somebody that'll say yes and and uh, be willing um to to have an interview with me here on the channel and and uh and we just have a good time and and experience um what we have to experience but for now we're just going to hang out in the word we're all people that love the word uh here at kbm my apostle preached once again just an absolute i almost wanted to call it a showstopper but it, it was an extraordinary message um we on Friday night we were in um we were in Cirrus for the youth meeting there. Just beautiful presence of God and loads of young people. The the youth at KBM truly is on fire. There is a revival happening. Um the Lord promised revival to KBM, said it's gonna happen amongst the young people. Um and we had a perception, we had an idea. Uh, what it should be, what it should look like, and all this kind of thing. And it's totally not what we thought it was going to look like. It's totally different. But but um, this is the true the true revival that we uh, that God wanted to uh, produce in KBM. It's it's an amazing amazing revival that's happening, and, and we're all very excited about it. Um, there there really is something happening amongst our youth. Um, and uh, the, the Lord is very kind to us. So we were there for Friday night, um, and then Apostle said, no, we got to come back for Sunday. So we came back on Sunday, and it was packed, 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 packed to the rafters, raft literally standing room only. Um, all the seats were full. The whole back section of the church uh, against the wall was full standing room over there. People packed out the foyer. People packed. that literally was overflow into um, out the door. Literally, that's a literal thing. I'm not, that's not an exaggeration. It was literally like that. There was no room in the building for people to be because what God is doing. Um, and and just absolutely loved it. It was just amazing to be a part of that. Just just to see it was a, a great privilege. And, and so we came back from that and we're in the throes of all that. Uh, the young people... The, it, it, one thing I must say that is really cool to see as well is, is you know, we get the sort of video clips back from the different locations of what God is doing. And it's just so good to see everybody so vibrant on a Friday night. It's not like this one is doing this, but it, does, it all has the same trend. It all has the same fire throughout all of it. So really cool to see. Um, we're really excited about that. And really excited about what Apostle is preaching, and 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 um, we have a great episode today. Um, I was I was kind of excited to to get into it, and and so I put a little status on WhatsApp. Um, and uh, so yeah, we're gonna get into that. Uh, so let's just uh, have a word of prayer together, and then uh, and then we can get into it. Heavenly Father, we give you glory, praise, worship, and honor. We thank you that it's not by might nor by power, but by your Spirit. And I thank you that as we as we place ourselves before your word to be taught by the word, we thank you that we'll receive revelation from heaven. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we thank you that we'll just enjoy the empowerment and the blessing that revelation brings to us, Jesus. And that your people might be empowered to go to the next place and the better place and the, the place of wealth and increase in their lives, Jesus, the place of completed assignment in jesus name and everybody that was online and watching and enjoying this together said amen amen so let's get into let's get into uh what apostle preached i've got my notes here um and uh we started out now we're going to stay with our theme 
um, in in uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 25. So let's just quickly read that. Always go back to it. Always go back to it. Don't just, um, don't just quote stuff from memory, right? So we say, oh, I know what Joel 2.25 says. I'll restore unto you the years, right? No, 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 don't do that. You don't get full on the memory of a steak. <laughs> I can't remember what a piece of sirloin tasted like and then think I'm going to enjoy being uh, satisfied by that. I'm not. Um, I have to go back and eat it. So I can't. I can't, it's fine to quote the scripture, don't get me wrong, it's fine to quote scripture, You got. there's no problems there, but I can't think that based on my memory, I am I am enjoying the fullness of what that is, I can't, I got to go back and look at it, get my eyes on it, get my mouth on it, get it in my ears on it, all right, so that's what we're going to do, Joel 2.25, uh, let me just share the screen here quickly so that you can see it, Joel 2.25, Afrikaans is it? Praise God. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Next sal yella for good the yar where the trek sprung on the footganger. Die kaalvreter en die afknijper verslind het my groot leermag, wat ek teen julle gestuur het. Um, en ons, ons gaan by die theme, gaan ons bly, uh, uh, totdat die Heere van ons uh, aanbeweeg, um, en wegbeweeg van die, um, maar die, die godsman het, het weer eens um, daar op klem gesit, en ons gaan maar daar bly uh, in die woord, en, en, en die thema is eind, eindelijk tyd en seisoene, tyd wat ons verloor het, tyd wat, um, tyd wat ons gemors het, en, en nou moet ons die tyd weer terugkry, um, and, and that is the challenge, is getting the time back, is what do I do to get the time back, and, uh, but let's go over here, here uh, in, in our notes, in, in my set of notes, I can make this available for those of you who do want it, I'll, I'll happily share my notes with you. Sarah was told that she was going to do something that was impossible in the natural, remember? That's how Apostle started that, but there is something very, very powerful in this, and I want to show you that. Genesis 17. Um, if you're not there already, you need to be. Genesis chapter number 17, go over there. That's where uh, we were on. And let me just check. It's verse 15 through 19. Okay, Genesis 17, Genesis 17, verse 15 through 19. Let's bring it up. Scroll down all the way. All right, here we go. Um, now, here's something I want to bring up. Just let's go from 13 because there is something very important that I want you to see before we get into this. He that is born in thine house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. Now, um, God is declaring the covenant. Wait, wait, let's just go back here. Verse 10, this is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your seed. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, okay? And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt. That just means between me and you. Jylle moet aan die vlees van jylle voorheid besnui word. Die vlees van jylle voorheid besnui word. En dit sal a teken wees van die verbond tussen my en jylle. Daar is die klem woord, daar is die belangrike woord, is verbond. Ons moet die woord onthou, voor ons in ons gedachte hou, verbond, verbond, verbond. Alright, covenant between me and you. I want you to pay attention to that. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in thy house or in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not thy seed. Okay. A sienki van achda dan moet onder jelle besnui word. Al wat manlik is in jelle geslachte. Die wat in jou huis geboren is en die wat van enige vreemdeling met geld gekoop is, wat nie van jou geslag is nie. Amal wat een sienkie is, amal wat een sienskind is, moet besnui word, want dit is die belangrijkheid van die verbond, dit is die, 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 die um, kern, dit is die, it's the requirement of the covenant, alright? Now, let's move on. 
Verse 13, he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. My covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. It's an everlasting covenant. It's going to be in your flesh and it's an everlasting covenant. Die wat in jou huis gebore en wat met jou geld gekoop is, met sekerlik, moet sekerlik besnui word. So moet dan my verbond in jylle vlees wees as een eeuwige verbond. Het moet in jou vlees wees, het moet een eeuwige verbond wees. Maar ons moet, hy, hy, die Heere sê oor en oor, jylle moet besnui word. Die seenskind moet besnui word. Ok, verse 14. And the uncircumcised man child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. En wat manlik is, en wat manlik is, en die voorheid het, wat nie aan die vlees van sy voorheid besnui is nie. Die siel, die siel moet uit sy volksgenote uitgeroei word. Hy het my verbond verbreek. Is belangrik. Die Heere, wat die baie ernstig op, die besnijdenis van die mens, van die, van die seenskind, en van die seenskinders, is baie belangrik vir die Heere. Now, we don't want to be covenant breakers, right? And we know that when you get born again, the, the circumcision is not the circumcision in the flesh, or when you go through baptism, rather. Circumcision is not in the flesh, it's the circumcision made without hands. The circumcision, the, the operation of Jesus, Jesus does the operation, and, and the circumcision of the Spirit happens. Right. Now, now after this, after this, God speaks his blessing and God gives a promise to Sarah. Okay. After the, he's talked about covenant. He says, I require covenant with you. I want you to be a covenant people. I want you to be a people that are not loosely dating me. I want to be in covenant with you. I want a marriage with you. I'm not looking for a midnight rendezvous. I'm looking for people that are covenanting with me, people that are joining with me, people that are saying yes to me. I'm here on the long uh, the long path with you. I'm committed to this relationship till death do us part. Now he's saying, and God said unto Abram, as for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah. Why? Because when there's a, when there's covenant, there's a change of name, right? We change names. You see that when people get married. When people get married, the wife takes on the husband's name. Why does it change the name? It's covenant. It's covenant. That's how covenant works. Okay. Um, verse 16. En ek sal haar sien en jou uit haar ook a sien gee. Ja, ek sal haar sien so dat sy tot nasie sal word. Konings van volke sal uit haar voortkom. <laughs> and I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, and I will bless her. I will bless her. Okay, I will bless her. He says twice now, and I will bless her and give thee a son. Also, yeah, and I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. So bang goes this idea that kings were not a part of God's plan. We see Saul fail, and we see this warning against Saul, but it wasn't that God had a problem with kings as such. It was a problem that it wasn't time yet for kings, and God is warning. He says, it's not time, it's not time, it's not time. And then Saul comes. He says, all right, if you guys you guys insist, I'm going to give you. And it's, he's really the best guy for the job. Um, but it's too early, and that's why it becomes the problem that it does. So kings is, was never a problem for God. Why? Jesus is king. So kings is an easy. He says, he says over here, kings of people shall be of her. There is a requirement in Israel for kings, just not so early. Okay, so God is saying, now, why did we bring all this up? God is saying to, to uh, Abram, your wife is going to have a child. And he goes on, he says, that's absolutely impossible. She's 90 years old. At that time, she's becoming, like, he was going to be 99. It was going to be like, are you ridiculous? This is mad. We, this can't happen. Um, it's, it's, our bodies don't do that stuff anymore. That's not going to be able to produce this child. And so the Lord is is saying, is saying, I'm going to do something that's impossible. Yes, it is impossible, 
But the the issue that Apostle sort of landed on in that statement was that blessing was given outside of time, that empowerment and that promise came from outside of time into time. And he is saying he's not he's not he's not um, unsympathetic of the situation. He's not uh, ignorant of the situation that their bodies are not able to produce at the time. So he is saying that based on time, I know that your body isn't going to be able to produce this promised child, right? But but I am also aware that because because he said I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you supernatural power. I'm going to give you an anointing. And I can do all things through the anointing, the blessing that gives me strength or which gives me strength, right? I I can do, remember the the title of the message was, I can do this. Regardless of, of what the natural looks like, I can do this. So that the, the empowerment, the, the promise comes from outside of time. It always comes from outside of time. It always comes from beyond the natural into the natural to do something that is impossible, right? That's impossible. But watch what the pretext is. Let's have a look at what the, 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 the context of the situation here that causes God to say, if you do this, if you do this, then it will happen for you, all right? So there is a context here. It's not just, hey, you're going to have a child. There's a context. What's the context? Well, let's go back. But is it context? Is context, is that all right for Afrikaans word? (laughs) Context. And he says, verse 11, and you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. Jelle moet aan die vlees van jelle voorheid besnui word, en dit sal a teken wees van die verbond tussen my en jelle. That is the context. That is, that is the, uh, that is the agreement. That is, that is the condition of you being able to fulfill supernatural things in your life. Is the covenant, the covenant between you and God, will determine your ability to fulfill supernatural things. Your ability. And remember, when God gives you a promise, when God gives you an assignment, that is, it's going to be supernatural. It's going to be completely against all that the world says is possible in your life, all that natural things say that is possible in your life. But it's completely possible. All things that are, all things are, with God, all things are possible. All right? To him who believes, all things are possible. But what's going to have to happen is we have to have a fulfillment of the covenant. Let's have a look at that word covenant real quick. I want you to have a look at that. Have a look at this word covenant. All right, so we go over here, covenant. And it says a compact between, made by passing between uh, pieces of flesh. It's a confederacy. It's a confed. It's a covenant. It's a league. So because of the covenant, because of the covenant, God is able to, manipulate things uh, that that look impossible. But he's saying, all right, this this is impossible in the natural, but I am able to, because these people have experienced time, 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 time. Boom, now they're at the end of days, of their days, and God is saying, here's a promise, here's a, an unfulfilled assignment. You still have to fulfill this assignment before you go. And they're saying we've experienced too much time. We've too much time has passed us by for us to still do that. See, but God, God does awesome things. God is able to manipulate time. God is able to move time. And God is able to say, well, my will will stand in this situation. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Because God is able to manipulate the situation. Isaiah 38, real quick. We're almost uh, almost running out of time here for this episode. But don't worry about it. There will be another one. Isaiah 38, turn your Bibles. Isaiah 38, verse 8. And let me just share this over here so you can see it. 
This is going to bless you guys. Behold, I will bring again. Wait, let's go back a little bit here. Let's go, go back. Uh, all right. All right. So Isaiah is saying, um, verse 4, Then came the Lord, the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold. Okay. So wait, we need to go a little bit further back here. Mm, there it is. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. So Hezekiah is about to die. He's sick, but he's a good king. He's a good king. Did a lot of good stuff. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. He said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of thy of God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, and behold, I will add unto thee thy days fifteen years. I'm going to give you another fifteen years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and will defend the city. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he hath spoken. Now I'm going to give you the sign. I'm going to give you the sign that the promise that I've given you um, is going to come to pass. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees which is gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, 10 degrees backward. So the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down. For the Afrikaans, it means the cake. Excel die skade weer op die grade wat dit gedaal het dier die son op die grade van Agas sy sonnewijser uh, laat teruggaan 10 grade achteruit en die son het 10 grade teruggegaan op die grade wat, die, wat dit gedaal het. What am I saying? is when there is a promise in place, God is able to manipulate the time. He said, I'm going to put the sun back. I'm going to move the sun back. I'm going to move time back. But what's, what's the pretext? The pretext is covenant with God. The pretext is relationship with God. The pretext is, is a oneness. It's a oneness with God. It's continual fellowship with God. And when that fellowship is there, that bond is there, that that bond of relationship begins to grow and 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 you begin to be concerned with the things of God, the ways of God, the thoughts of God. And then all of a sudden assignment begins to become very clear. But the time, the linear time has still passed. God is saying, I'll push the sundial back. <laughs> I'll push the sundial back 10 degrees and I will give you more time. This is how I know that it's going to happen, is the restoration of time to make sure that you're able to do this. The same thing with Abram and Sarah. It's past our time. God says, I'm not going to work in your linear time. I will hold time at a standstill, and the linear time won't matter. But I'm going to keep things in place so that my purpose can come to pass. Look at Joshua. Joshua is in the valley and he's fighting and it's not looking like if the sun goes down while I'm fighting, I'm not going to win this battle. The sun, I need the sun to stay up. You have given me a promise. We're going to go into the land. We're going to take this. And he and he, he points his finger at that sun and says, son, you need to stand still. Moon, you stay in that valley. You do not come out of that valley until I have won. And for a full day, for a, the Bible says for a full day, the sun did not go down it was, and the moon did not come up. So a good, I, I'm guessing it's a 24 hours, became 48 hours of just sunlight. And... And God was able to manipulate time to ensure that his purposes came to pass. God has given you a promise. He has given you something that he said that he was going to do, but you are panicking because you're running out of time. God is saying, 
I can manipulate time. I can hold things in place, but it is based on covenant and fellowship and relationship with me. You've got to stay in relationship with me. You've got to stay prayerful for, before me. We've got to keep communication lines open between us in order for this to happen. I hope this has been a blessing. It sure has been a blessing to me. Um, I've enjoyed teaching it. We'll see you on the ne- on the next episode. We love you. We're praying for you. Bye for now.